I'm here today in the Trinity Alps doing a solo backpacking trip. Uh, I've been walking for about two hours. It's an absolutely gorgeous day out. It's uh, 70 degrees, nice and sunny. Uh, I'll be doing a trail. It's approximately around 25 to 30 miles round trip, depending on where you look at and how far you go. Uh, two goals for this trip is, uh, well, I guess three goals. One would be, i got some new gear to play with, so I'll do some reviews on that as I go. Uh, that should be fun. Uh, two, I want to try some fishing. I have no idea what the fishing will be like up here. I, I looked for some trip reports and things online and didn't get a lot of information. I know there's fish in the Trinity Alps. I just don't know about this particular section I'm on, which is called the Stewart Fork Trail. Um, and the third thing, get a lot of pictures and video. I'm going kind of heavy on the camera uh, and the tripod this trip, so I want to try to spend some time getting some cool shots and video. It's 11.30 right now and I'm getting pretty hungry. For today's lunch, and I guess lunch for the next couple of days, I have extra aged Gouda. B Meister, B Meister. Yeah, I don't know, it's really good, I had it before. I also have, let's see what we have here. We have fennel pollen salami with Sangiovese wine. That'll be good. And then just to kind of round off the, uh, the snack here, I have tomato basil um, wheat thins. There's the word I'm looking for, tomato basil wheat thins. So all three of these combined, we're gonna make up some little sandwiches. I was talking with the uh, cheese guy at the, at the counter at the grocery store and I told him like what I was doing and what kind of cheese I was looking for and told him everything I was putting together. He goes, dude, that's, that's gonna be a flavor explosion. I'm not, I don't know if I'd like that. I'm like, you know what? I like intense flavors when I'm out here backpacking. I want some, something with some, some taste. So we'll see how this works out. So here we go, the sandwich is made. Let's test it out. It's super good. I love this Gouda. I've had it a couple times before. Mmm. That plus tomato basil. Mmm. Very good. We're definitely doing this one again. I saw this campsite, so I came down here. Uh, I'm going nice and slow today, so I got plenty of time to stop and uh, enjoy the sights, do some fishing. It looks like uh, you know got a little rapid. Have some depth here in the water, a little shade. I don't know. It feels trouty to me. We'll see. Well guys, I tried fishing for about 10, 15 minutes. No luck, I didn't see any type of fish. Even small ones, big ones, just nothing. Uh, can't beat the view though. Absolutely gorgeous. There are several different types of butterflies here. They're black with orange tips and then white specks down the sides of their wings. So pretty cool. And then there's little tiny purple ones and a bunch of little tiny uh, honeybees also. o'clock. I've been walking since about 9.30. Stopped by this really nice stream and got some water. For snack time I have Tex-Mex. Trail mix. Spicy peanuts, almonds, salsa corn sticks, sesame sticks, chili bits, and pitas. I don't know what those are. Anyways, it's pretty good. Got a target. It's been a good trail so far. Um, not too many people. I come across people once every hour and a half or so, maybe two. Um, not much wildlife yet. I've seen some butterflies and uh, a couple of squirrels, but that's about it. The um, water here is like every mile you get a, a nice little stream, so no need to carry much water. It might dry up more in, later in the year, but uh, for right now, awesome water supply. Got about a mile and a half left to go, uh, and then I should be at the uh, meadow area, and we'll check that out, see what it looks like. Hopefully I can find a little secluded spot and then uh, set up and do some fishing. I 
made it to Morris Meadow, awesome view. You can see the whole mountains. The sun's gonna set over there and then drop on these mountains. I should get some cool pictures and probably do a little time lapse with the GoPro. Uh, great campsite, tons of room, good place to camp. The river's over that way and I'm gonna take a break here for about an hour and then it's fishing time. Recently picked up a new shelter. This is the MLD Solo Med XL. I used to have the Duo Med uh, in Sil Nylon. This is DCF. Um, we wanted to try out um, kind of a modular system that I can use both in the winter, in the spring, the summer. Just kind of like the one man, one person tent that can do it all. Uh, this is my second outing with this tent and the first time I've used it with the Inner Nest. Probably don't need it. I don't see any mosquitoes. There are three million flies around here. Um, but I bought the brought the Inner Nest just to try it out, see how I like it. Got the tent set up. I've been just sitting here. I like went in this meditative zone out stage. Been walking almost steady since like 9:30 with just a few short breaks, and um, got pretty hot today, upper 80s, um, and uh, I didn't realize until I sat down that I was kind of like. A little lightheaded so I've just been sitting here relaxing a lot of butterflies up here too very pretty um been drinking the water i sweat so much today and i know i didn't drink enough and, and by the way i used to use the sawyer micro the little tiny mini one the real one this one actually works i hate the micro don't ever buy it get this one you know that moment in a camping trip when you're sitting there you got the case of munchies like super bad and you just want to eat all your food. And then you start looking at it and going, huh, did I bring enough? Should I have brought more? Just had that moment. Right now I'm gonna do a original turkey stick, turkey sausage. No, it's not good. It tastes like, I don't know, rubber dog toy? Yeah, rubber dog toy. Beef only. Do not. Ugh. I fished for like 30 or 40 minutes in that little bend in the stream, and there were. I saw two fish. They came close. They went after my lure. I think even one hit it once, but they never were super aggressive. I think they're rainbows. They're six to seven inches long probably. Hard to tell in the moving water. Here's my lure selection for this type of fishing. I'm completely open for suggestions because mountain streams are not my expertise. I seem to do okay in the lakes uh, using the cast masters. I've, I've had multiple uh, in Yosemite, that's why I was using I was using the cast master and I think it's using one of the black Meps Fury and that was hitting on the rainbows like left and right. But that was in a lake. Um, I never quite know what to do in the river. Any suggestions, let me know. I'm setting up the inner part of my tent and I just pulled a dum-dum. If you will see, here's the tent inner. And the zipper is on the back side, not the front side. I'm like, why is this not fitting? The tie-outs I had all perfectly measured out perfectly, not working. Because I'm an idiot, I put the door, the whole thing in backwards. Anyways, that's what happens when you get a new, new uh, New setup, I guess. He screwed up a few times. As you can see now, I have the inner with the door facing towards the other door so I can get out of the thing. Probably a good idea to do it that way. Now comes my least favorite part of any camping trip ever is blowing up this bloody thermal rest. You know, we all have to do this. We all do it many, many times. Every single time we go camping. There's got to be a better way for this valve to work. Come on, Thermarest, put your heads together. So setting up the shelter reminds me of a, a little story from back in the day. Uh, one of the first shelters I ever got was the Golight Shangri-La 3, which was like a TP, um, kind of like this is a pyramid, it was kind of like a TP version, same thing, floorless shelter, pole in the middle, uh, I was really lightweight. I thought I was the, a cool, lightweight, awesome guy for having that. Uh, so if you watch a vi watch one of the videos, it's the um, Algonquin Uplands Backpacking Trail. It's one of the first like multi-day backpacking trips. I think it was the first that Joe and I ever did together. And we bought the Go Light Shangri-La 3 because we thought that was really cool. We um, were still trying to figure out our gear and what we, what we do and, and how it works and all that because 
We brought that with no floor because it was ultralight, but I also brought a four and a half pound tripod. So we were still in the, the learning phase for sure. Anyways, um, the first night, and the video doesn't do this justice. That's why I figured I'd tell this story. The video does not do this justice. We roll into camp. It is pouring rain. It's been pouring like most of the afternoon. And we set the tent up in one spot. And we look, and like a little while later, the water was pooling underneath the tent. It didn't, there's no floor to it, so it was just like a pool. So we're like, oh crud, we gotta move it. So we moved it. If you watch the video, you'll see there's like a standing puddle there in the morning. In the morning, it's like three inches deep. Well, we moved the tent just a little ways away. There was very little flat ground and a lot of brush and there's no other campsites. And it was like, this is the only place we can be. This is, it was rough. And <laughs> so we set it up and the go light uses a pole just like that one. Um, it uses an aluminum, like three and a half, four foot long pole that goes in the middle of the tent and then we, you sleep on either side of it. That's how, how the setup was in that tent. And so we get it set up and then if you watch the video, you'll see we call it like the Joe River or something like that. There's water just pouring underneath the tent. There's like a river, like an inch deep going underneath the tent. It's raining extremely hard. Well, that night we get into the tent and I remember it, like there was no lightning all day long. And then we go to bed and then the lightning started. So now we're sitting in kind of a, a small river underneath of us with a four foot aluminum pole right next to our heads. Um, anyways, from what I can remember that night, I was very scared of that, that evening. Lightning is always a, kind of a, you know, that's the ultimate scary thing in the outdoors. Um, but yeah, anyways, that was a little story. When I set the pole up, that's the first thing that popped into my mind. Tonight's dinner, we got ramen with spicy peanut Thai chili sauce. I'll put the link in the description. It's not my recipe. I got it from Andrew Skirka. It's uh, it's quite good. It's a uh, oldie but goodie. I think I put a bit much too sriracha in here. Oh. Ooh, I can breathe better now. been a great night so far. I have the GoPro out there doing a little time lapse on the sun setting on the mountains. Hopefully that comes out cool. I have no idea. There are two different packs of deer. There's six or seven that way, another four or five that way. Got some really cool pictures and video. <sighs> time to sit back and relax. I'll wait for the stars to come out and then do some astrophotography. This thing's brazen. What are you doing? Go away. Shoo. This is an awesome evening, it's about 8.30. I don't think it's ever gonna get dark here. I'm just chilling out, hanging with the fire, watching the sunset. It's also a good time to do camp maintenance. I've been using the Sawyer here. It's working quite well. The full size one works much better than the small one. But it's now time for a little cleanup time. Usually flush them like once a day is more than enough was filtering some water from some gross scummy pond stuff. So I figured this would be a good thing to do tonight for tomorrow. Went through like four liters of water today. I was like super, super sweaty. It was warm. I think it was supposed to go up to 88. But the next two days it's supposed to cool down. Tomorrow as high as like 75. And then the day after it's like 57. So it's, uh, I, I don't know, <laughs> quite the temperature change. I'd much rather have it be cool though, especially on the, on the way out. I'm going to try to book it and get home. Um, already missing the dog quite a bit. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. Just woke up. Um, as you can see, you can see my breath. It's a little chilly out here. I slept super good. Uh, finally, the deer stopped going around camp around... Uh, probably like 10 30 it seems they, they stopped annoying me but i slept completely through the night didn't get up once uh felt awesome sitting here watching the sunrise up over the mountains and uh getting my oatmeal going i'm going to uh try to get on trail this morning and uh just kind of work my way slowly up and do some fishing 
there's a lake at the top of this trail. This is an out and back. And if there's good camping up there, I'll camp up there. If it's not, then I'll come back down this way. I'm not really sure what I want to do. Uh, if the fishing's good, I will definitely stay up there too. This morning's breakfast is oatmeal, with pumpkin pie spice, uh, brown sugar, dehydrated banana slices, and almonds. It's a new recipe. I haven't tried this one before. Kind of made it up on the fly. It's pretty good. Made it to the top and have an awesome view. Got the whole mountain and lake in the background. And then if you come this way, you can see the valley I came from. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome view. I'm gonna set the tent up right here um, on this little hill. It's kind of exposed, but I wanted to test out my tent and see how it works in exposed areas anyways. I'll have to get good at trying to set it up with just rocks alone. Um, but yeah, absolutely freaking gorgeous. And there's a few clouds now, so it's a little cloudy. I'm not getting sunburnt up. Got the solo mid all set up. I'm really happy with the pitch. It looks really nice. Uh, this ground is about a quarter inch of, of, of sand gravel, and then it's solid rock. So I had to do a bunch of rock piles on the outside. I was able to get nice and tight. Um, the wind's coming this way, so it'll get good, good ventilation. Typically, I wouldn't set up a tent in the middle of the day, but this is a re relatively popular trail, so there's people kind of coming up and down all the time. So I wanted to make sure my, my area was set up and good to go. lucked out. First cast today is a rookie. It's lunchtime. It is perfection out here. It's super, super nice. It's cool to see the clouds drift by. Hopefully I can get that on a time lapse. I tried a time lapse last night on my GoPro, a little night lapse, and it only did two seconds. They're really cool two seconds, but you gotta, I think I gotta let it sit for about a half an hour. So I'm gonna try to do that at least a couple of times tonight and get some little clips. But got plenty of crackers left. My cheese supply is dwindling, but I'm just eating smaller bites of it. And there's still like, oh, there's tons of this sausage stuff. Bit of a breeze right now coming towards me, which I like, cools me off. Usually I've always found, maybe this is just my own craziness, that the fish tend to come towards wherever the breeze is blowing towards. Cause supposedly all like the small crap in the water that they eat on comes this way. That's, all, that's what I've always been told. I don't know if that's actually true, but if it is, I'm in the right spot. Gorgeous day. I can't believe I got a fish on my very first cast. There was, there was two other people sitting here fishing. They'd been here for like 20 minutes. I, I roll up, tie my knot, whoosh, first thing. And like literally within three seconds, I, I caught one. And they're like, are you serious? That's unbelievable. Anyway, so I felt, I felt pretty cool um, that I could show up and catch one of the first casts. Of course, I haven't caught anything since then, but I only, only fished for about 20 minutes after that. There's two more lakes up there. There's one more big one and then like one really dinky one way at the top. And there is a path to get there, but I talked to some guys and they said it was like overgrown, brushy and, and hard. Uh, and it's like another mile. They said it felt like four. And I'm like, forget that. I know there's brook trout in here. I've got an awesome campsite. I mean, maybe the view's a little different or better up there, but this is, this is pretty awesome. <laughs>
did some more fishing. Uh, no luck though. It's uh, kicked up, gotten a little windy, but it's nice. I uh, came down from the lake about 100 yards from there is a, a nice campground area. You could probably fit six, seven, eight tents comfortably in here. Um, there's a nice big group campfire right behind me. And there's, the most important thing is there's really good shade right now. Uh, I decided not to take or put my tent up here because I, it's Friday night, this is a pretty popular trail, and it seems like people like to come in groups of like three to five uh, with their dogs, which is allowed here, which I think is interesting, which I might bring Luna, my dog, back here with Kelsey someday, just because I didn't even think about it, but wilderness areas do allow dogs, so that's kind of cool. Um, but a lot of people with like decent sized groups, I am the only solo person I've seen, a couple of couples, but I'm the only solo person I've seen thus far. So I figured I'd take the um, challenging uh, site to set up on that probably no one else would want to. And if you had you know, two tents, you couldn't put it where I'm at. So leave this open for everyone else and I'll take the cool one, uh, the cool picture one at least. I, I think I think I'm gonna get some, some pretty epic pictures this evening, I'm hoping. Time for a siesta. Wish uh, I had my hammock, but I think the ground will work just fine. I'm just gonna nod my head back and relax for the next two, three hours because it's only gonna get hotter and sunnier from here. Got a little brookie here, just change it up to the Meps Black Fury and first cast, and I got the guy. Nice looking brookie right here. Look at that thing, absolutely beautiful. So I'm super excited, I just got an awesome brook trout. Um, it was it was good size, it was about the width of two of my hands together. It was, it was this big, it was, it was a fat one too. Biggest one I've ever caught up here in a mountain stream. Um, not that I've done a lot of brook trout fishing up here, but I was really excited. Uh, hope to get a few more of those tonight, that'd be awesome. It is windy. It, there, there is some wind. Sunlight's starting to go down. I'm getting very, very hungry. So I'm gonna have the rest of my ramen and Thai peanut uh, set up. I'm pretty excited, the uh, clouds have cleared. It got kind of clouded up, but now it's nice and clear. So hopefully I can do some night photography and maybe do some time-lapse stuff too. Here's the jar I've been using to hold the peanut sauce. It's, um, I don't know, I think I got it at REI many years ago. But um, when you get down to the end, it's hard to get what's left out. So I poured some hot water in there, kind of slush it around. It kind of turns a kind of a gross color, but, um, it tastes really good, so just waiting for it to warm up and then I'm going to chow down. I finished off my Thai peanut mix, now on to dessert. It's the peanut butter chocolate that has morphed into a, I don't know, a blob. It comes out in big blobs. I think it's better, honestly. It's just big chunks. Mmm. So I got the crunch. That's good. 7 o'clock now. We'll be until about 10 o'clock when I start doing any type of time lapse thing for night skies. So I'm gonna go hit up the fishing for another two hours, I think. Um, I'd love to get another brookie, like that big one I got. Man, that was, that was really cool. Note to self, get more of this. I don't know if you saw it or the clip will even come out, but there's this bird, I'm not sure what it is. It's kind of, it doesn't look like an eagle. It doesn't have a body, it looks kind of like a body of a seagull. It's got a white belly and kind of brown top. Um, but it's circling the lake right now and it just went in right over there, not too far away from where I was casting it. It was about 40 feet off the ground and then just whoop and went right into the ground or right into the water splash and then came back up. So uh, I, I got some competition here this evening, I guess. No one else is out here fishing. Got that one on a gold Castmaster 3.8. I've been uh, 
pulling in a little bit slow, like almost like painfully slow to me to reel it in. But I've had two or three hits since I slowed down. That was the first one I landed. Good morning, just woke up at 6 a.m. Um, it was kind of windy last night, but I slept pretty good here. Had some strange dreams though. Uh, got about, I think it's 12 miles back to the car, but 90% of it's downhill, so it should go quicker than coming up. I'm not gonna film as much because it's an out and back and I've already seen everything. <sighs> This is the hardest part of camping is getting out of the sleeping bag. I'm getting everything packed up with the outer still up. The cool thing about this tent is you can, if, let's say if it's pouring rain or in this case it's cold and windy outside, you can take down the inner bug net, store it away in your dry area, um, and then get out of the tent and take down the rest of the tent. Have that be the last thing you put into your pack or um, you, some packs I use I can slide it in the outside. <laughs> You know that moment in hiking when you get back to your car and you have that nice clean set of clothes you put the new clothes on take the old clothes off and then it hits you how bad those hiking clothes smelled anyways i just did that um i might might have to burn those when i get home apparently i was more gross than i thought i'm still super excited i caught those fish that was a lot of fun um it was a great trail it's a good place for dogs um, i'll type up a full description and put it in the video comments below if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Till next time.